Hello there. In this second video in the series, I'm going to document the process of assembling the Brielle Altair 8800 computer kit. So we'll take a look at the steps involved and follow along as I assemble the board and put all the parts on and get it ready for the first power-up test. So the first thing I did was uh, take a look at the CD-ROM that has all the manual documentation and software and print off a hard copy of the setup and user's manual. Now, I like to have a hard copy so I can mark things off on the instructions as I do the assembly and make any notes on things that I find. Uh, the manual is actually quite good. It's got a little over 40 pages. covers a bit of the history of the Altair computer, why it was important. I uh, even talked a little bit about um, Microsoft's early software that they developed for the Altair and the famous computer that Bill Gates, the famous open letter to hobbyist letter that Bill Gates wrote uh, back in 1976. It also covers operation of the computer and assembly if you bought it as a kit as I did. Um, so we'll step through and follow the instructions in the manual. You may also want to print off the schematic diagram which is two pages uh, if you're comfortable with reading schematics. There are also additional um, uh, addendas on the CD for updated information about new features, the new features that were added in the latest firmware. So you want to check that out, um, as well as building the external serial adapter that's new in this fourth uh, version of the series, fourth batch of the computer. So the first step was to organize all the parts and make sure that I have everything, and it, I compared uh, everything to the parts list in the manual and it looks like we do have everything here. We've got the two PCBs, the main board and the display board. We've got all the various IC sockets, header connectors, different connectors for the keyboard, video display, power, SD card, uh, ribbon cables that connect between the two boards, the integrated circuits including the two processors that are on board, all of the switches for the front panel, resistors, LEDs for the front panel, and some more discrete and active components, a couple voltage regulators, electrolytic capacitors, two crystals, more capacitors, uh, resistors, and a diode, and a little bit of miscellaneous hardware. And we've also got the case with the uh, custom front panel, and a rear panel with some cutouts for the various uh, connections. Uh, a nice touch is there's a serial number on every system. Um, this is serial number 0254, so looks like there's just over about 250 of these kits in the wild. So I'm going to warm up my soldering iron and we'll get started uh, following the, the process that is recommended in the manual, which is starting with the shorter or lower components, um, starting with the SD card connector and the resistors, and working up to the other components that go on the main board. Uh, so I'll check in again once we have some of the first parts soldered on the board. Okay, I've just soldered the first component which is the SD card connector which is where the um, mass storage SD card installs. And for the first component, I think this is actually um, going to be one of the most challenging components to solder. It's actually a surface mount connector. The pins are spaced quite far apart but um, it's quite delicate work, so I think if you get through this process, then uh, everything else should be pretty smooth sailing. Um, even if your eyesight is good, I recommend you use some kind of magnifier. Uh, these type uh, are very good for seeing what you're doing when you're soldering. And for small components like this, I think you want to use a, a magnifier or something like a loop to examine the soldering after you've done it to make sure you don't have any bridges or bad solder joints. So this went pretty straightforward. Um, I've got a good quality uh, soldering station here. Um, the manual has some good suggestions and comments on soldering. The only thing I would take issue to is he does mention a soldering iron or gun. And the only guns I've seen would be this type that are very high wattage. This is definitely not something you'd want to try and use for building a board like this. You want to use a lower power 25, 35 watt type soldering station. Something like this or something a little less expensive you can get from places like Radio Shack. And you want to use solder that is uh, reasonably thin 
so that you can access all of the smaller pins. So it, everything looks good so far. Uh, next step is to install the resistors. Okay, I've now installed the dozen or so resistors on the main board and that uh, went ahead without any problems. I like to be a little paranoid when I'm putting these together and actually measure the value of each resistor before I solder it with a multimeter just to try and avoid any errors, particularly on my part or the remote possibility of having a bad resistor. One minor puzzle I'll have to look into, the manual says that there is no resistor R15 uh, however, there's a position for R15 on the board and I was given the 560 ohm resistor and I see it on the schematic so I think I'll go on to the Brielle Computers forum and just ask there to confirm that that part is not supposed to be soldered in. So next I'm going to move ahead with the crystals and some of the other smaller components. The two crystals and diode are now soldered in and the next step is to solder in the IC sockets which I imagine will take a little while and I'll take my time doing that to make sure I don't get any solder bridges. Okay I'm just a little more than half done soldering in the IC sockets I just have the larger ones left to do. It went pretty quickly. Um, it's good practice to first solder two opposite corners of each socket and then just have a look at everything straight before soldering the rest of the sockets and then just take your time and uh, be careful make sure you solder every pin and don't get any solder bridges and then take a look with a magnifying glass later to make sure everything's fine if you're going to have a bad soldering connection or forget to solder something this is likely where you're going to do it I could add that it's not required to use sockets but on a kit like this it's certainly nice to have things with sockets in case you need to remove an IC that's suspect it's much easier than trying to unsolder an entire IC I also noticed that Vince has shipped the uh, good quality machine type sockets which is nice. Okay we've got all the IC sockets installed now so it's time to take a little break and then I'll continue with installing some of the headers and the remaining components and connectors. Okay I've now installed the capacitors, power connector, PS2 keyboard connector, the TV output jack, in the VGA output connector. So just a few more components to be installed on the main board. So I finished up the assembly of the main board with the installation of the electrolytic capacitors, the two voltage regulators, and then put all of the integrated circuits into their sockets. So the main board is now completed. We'll set it aside and start working on the front panel for the printed circuit board. We now move on to assembling the front panel printed circuit board. Uh, there's not too many components, no active components on the front panel. It's got resistors, switches, and LEDs, but it looks like this will be a little more mechanically challenging to put together because we've got to make sure that the switches and the LEDs properly fit through all the holes in the front panel. So I've started off by assembling the uh, resistors. There's 32 identical 220 ohm resistors to install, and I've just soldered those in. And then I'm going to move to installing the little resistor packs. After soldering the three resistor packs, the next step is to solder in uh, the two 40-pin IDC headers. It's important to put these on the back of the circuit board because they need to connect to the ribbon cables that go to the main board. The next step is to install the front panel switches. Uh, to make sure they line up with the holes in the front panel, we screw the front panel on after putting the switches in place solder one pin, check everything is correct, and then solder the remaining pins. So I've started with the three uh, three position momentary switches and now continue with all of the other switches. Well it was a little tedious and it took a few attempts to get all the switches lined up properly but I've now got the switches properly installed and it's time to move on to the LEDs. We have lots of LEDs ready to be soldered Here's a last look at the PCB before we mount it on the front panel. So the LEDs are installed and the front panel is now finished. All that's left is to now do the final assembly of the circuit boards and the interconnecting cables into the case. Well before we do the final assembly, this fourth batch of boards came with a bonus 
a small external serial adapter board that allows uh, adding a serial port that can be used as an external terminal rather than the onboard terminal. So just a small board with one IC and socket, a header and a serial cable, and four capacitors. So I'll wire this up before we get on to the final assembly. Okay, the external serial adapter is all wired up. Uh, ready to look at some point when I want to try that new feature. Uh, one wrinkle was I discovered that I was missing the female header connector that goes on the back, but fortunately I had some of the right connectors in my junk box and was able to install them. I've now completed the final assembly. I've installed the main board into the case with the uh, connectors that come out the back and connected the front PCB and ribbon cables connecting them together. So that completes the assembly. In the next video, I'm going to find a suitable monitor, keyboard, and power supply, and we'll prepare an SD card and then power this thing up and see if it works.